So Julia Domo has been helping me uh, build some tools uh, to better crop images and do some other like good stuff to help build data sets. And it sort of got me back uh, working with data set tools, uh, which is a library I, I manage, I guess, a little bit. Um, just to sort of like start to think about maybe ways to automate better data set creation. Uh, it's always one of the big challenges. You've got a lot of images and you want to work across all of them um, in an efficient way uh, without sort of like doing every image by hand. And this is uh, this image you see here on the screen is a great example of like an image that I deal with like fairly frequently. Um, you know, you'll see that this is a flower image and the ideal way to do this would be to crop in, uh, you know, all the way to the bounds of the artwork. So you're not, you know, using or losing, I guess, data uh, with all of the space around it. Um, and the challenge here is that, you know, these are old scans or like scans from paper and the paper has, you know, a certain texture to it, right? There's a little bit of a, a, a dappling to it, I guess, is maybe the way to describe it. And so you can't really like in Photoshop, you can't just simply go, you know, image trim uh, and then trim from a pixel color because the pixel colors aren't, they aren't really like the same across the image. So it's really hard to automate this. Um, and in the past, I've done some work where I just like manually crop these, but even that is like, it's tedious, right? Like for a hundred images, you know, that takes an evening, um, for a thousand images that takes 10 evenings. And that's just like not, not valuable or not worth doing that sort of, uh, work or it like, it's, it's definitely valuable, but it causes like just some issues in terms of, um, how much time do you really have? So I started digging into like how to better automate this work. And, um, one way to, that I sort of thought about it is like, um, you're probably very familiar with things like uh, canny edge detection, which is something that is already available within the data set tools library. Let's take a look at canny. Um, you know, it generates edges and you can sort of see already, like this is a great example of where, hey, if I have an edge detection and I just want to crop out everything that's black, right? Like, so anywhere where like the entire row or the entire column is black, just crop into that. Um, so that's essentially what I built. Uh, so and this is now a new, uh, a new script built into the data set tools library. Um, I'll point out some areas in which it doesn't work great, but uh, we'll quickly take a look at it. So um, there's two options for this. There is uh, a canny edge detector and then there's a thresholding edge detector. Uh, and this will basically want to play with it and sort of figure out what works best for your images. Um, so this is what the thresholding map looks like. And it does the same thing where it sort of removes all the black pixels. Um, so if there's a row or a, a column of black pixels, it just sort of removes it. There's a lot of blurring and a lot of other uh, sort of like texture manipulation here to make sure that um, you know, it's sort of skipping areas that are paper texture, but keeping areas where there are uh, much bigger contrast changes. Um, so really quickly, uh, let's take a look at how to do this inside of the Datasets Tools Library. All right, so here we are inside the Datasets Tools Library, um, and we're going to use the script that is called uh, Crop Bounds. Um, and this is sort of how it works. So there's a couple features in here. It's actually maybe one of the best things to do. Um, if you've never done this before, I highly recommend this for pretty much any script, um, is you type in the script name and then you do dash dash help. Uh, and I can see that I haven't updated a couple of the texts in here, but um, there's a number of different options here. And the way this works is a lot, very similar to a lot of the other data set tools libraries I have, um, or data sets tools scripts. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, pass in an input folder um, and then you'll pass in uh, an output folder. So this is uh, similar across all of uh, my scripts in here. I'm just gonna press up to get back to that, this one. So um, once you've got input output, uh, you can just go ahead and run this. Um, and by default, it's gonna run the canny process type, um, but there is a way to switch that. Uh, so if you wanna use um, the uh, thresholding process type, you can just do process type and then do threshold. You'll see that that's the option here. Um, so you can do that as an option. Uh, one thing that I've definitely found works well to play with is to play with the blur size. So um, blur size determines basically like how much of the texture is worth keeping. Um, and this is one of those challenges where you sort of have to just play around with it and sort of see what works. Um, I find for really large images, like I'm working on like 4K images, you'll wanna pass in a blur size that's a little bit larger um, so I've been passing in like, actually, it always needs to be um, an odd number. So 11 or 15 even. Um, threshold applies some additional blurring, uh, which I just found just helps in general with threshold. Um, but this will be the exact blur size used for canny. Um, one thing to also note is that the way that this process works is it actually scales the image down to apply the canny or threshold process and scales it back up to 
um, or actually just like maps the scaling size, um, the crop size back up to uh, to crop. So it should be pretty performant. Um, it could probably use a little bit of uh, detail there. Um, I believe the scaler by default is 0.125. So uh, you can change that by um, passing in a different float value. So if you wanted it at 0.5, you could do that. Um, one thing to note is that uh, canny will be pretty messy if uh, you don't do a lot of blurring or if you don't uh, scale it down because a really high res image uh, will you'll find a lot of edges basically with with canny process so just be aware of that um, let's see what else in here is in here oh so I think another um, thing that's worth adding is padding um, so you'll see in the images I have here that these are not cropped uh, completely to the edge right and I found that's just really helpful because uh, if you don't if you crop those edges then you can't also open it back up in Photoshop and uh, do some of the nice sort of like uh, context aware fill padding if you wanted to pad it back to square. So um, there's a function here that adds padding. Um, and I believe it's set to a default of 100 pixels. So that's going to add 100 pixels to the final crop. Um, so you can make that smaller, say 10, or you can make it much larger if you wanted. Um, this is another one just that's maybe just nice to play with uh, and be aware of. Um, so this is pretty much the process. Uh, once you've got this script built up, you can just hit uh, return and we'll just start processing them. Um, now, uh, a couple notes about this thing is it's not perfect. Um, as you can see already, this image is not great. So one thing that I've noticed with thresholding is that thresholding tends to keep text uh, fairly legible, whereas uh, canny does not. Canny will sort of eliminate a lot of small text, which is maybe good if you have things like text in the corner. Um, so let's see if there's a canny example here that's a little bit better. Well, this one, you, there's probably text in the bottom, but you can't see it because it's been eliminated. Um, but canny is also not great in that sometimes it, it misses edges um, and it misses like sort of, so you'll see here, this is sort of a light, there's not a lot of contrast here, right? So it kind of cropped in on those. Um, I believe there's more to that edge. Uh, so you can sort of see that it's been eliminated from this uh, canny edge. So both canny and threshold are sort of good in combination, but they won't always be perfect for all your images. So you'll probably just have to play with them. And I would generally say like, in some cases you might even just need to like bump up the threshold or bump up the padding and then uh, go through and pick out the ones that work well and, and like delete the ones that don't work as well. So like for example, this one worked pretty well. Um, you can sort of see this already is, is pretty well cropped and I could pull this into um, Photoshop and, and clean up the edges and make it square a little bit. Um, whereas this one just didn't at all, right? So it's like, I'll need to go in and probably hand crop this one just because, well, actually this one might work with the canny process. So it's again, sort of an issue of where uh, half your images might work well with canny, half your images might work well with thresholding, and you just have to kind of play with them and figure out what, what's what. Um, so this one turned out pretty well. Obviously this text uh, got caught. Um, so you may also want to still do some hand processing uh, just to remove these pieces of text. Now one last thing to note is that um, you know this doesn't automatically uh, straighten your images, right? So let's see if there's a case here. I think I just saw one. This is a pretty good example, right? The bottom edge of this is not straight. It's sort of like tilted a little bit. Um, so it's going to work with the images you give it and just f sort of find the bounds around it. Now, uh, some stuff Julie and I are working on is trying to actually like auto straighten that or be able to perceive that straightness and fix it. Um, or maybe even build a tool to do a little bit of straight line, like you can draw a straight line and then it, it fixes to that. That's sort of how Photoshop works and that's a really nice tool. So we might try to build some stuff off that. Um, so anyway, probably more changes coming to the data sets tool library in the next couple weeks. Um, but I'm really excited about this and hope you can find it useful. Um, if you have any questions, please drop me a note in Slack. Um, and I hope you, you find a way to use this um, and share some examples if you do. Um, I'd love to see what other people work on. And um, if you're finding it doesn't work for your use case, maybe there's another way around it. Um, so that's it for me. Um, thanks, and I'll see you next time.